Okay, so we're out in the lab today. Um, the radio finally did come. What we're going to be working on today is this is a Sani radio that is in my Sani SY35U excavator. Um, kind of got intermittent issues or several other videos on this. Um, we basically troubleshooted as far as we can. Um, something's happening internally to the radio where audio just stops working. The radio appears to be functioning, but there is no audio coming out. Um, just kind of depending on conditions. It seems to be kind of weather related. Um, but we weren't able to determine what's happening in here. Everything looked okay. Uh, but these are so inexpensive. Um, this is a eBay uh, radio. This is designed or supposed to be designed for heavy equipment. Um, it's very similar. Uh, this is the model number and the manufacturer. Um, one thing I'll note is the connector is different, but it seems to use the same blade. So it should be as just as simple as taking this connector off uh, and lining up everything. These are really simple, um, hot, ground, memory battery. So this is 12 volt constant. Um, and then you have your speaker wires down here. So fairly simple. This one was relatively close to that as far as... Um, connectivity other than they've split the speaker wire um, you got power here and I just want to show you here they make it really nice and easy um, so basically they have all of everything labeled right on the radio should be a really easy swap um, but I've got it here in the lab we're basically going to swap out the cables test this before we put it in uh, another thing I'll note is these screws right here um, we'll be swapping those out uh, so stay tuned, and we'll get right to it. Okay, so we've got this disassembled. Um, this is the new radio. Uh, this is a connector and basically I don't have the correct tool but you can kind of see there see that little nub that sticks up on each one of those uh, what I did is I reached down through the front um, with a pair of sharp tweezers um, let me see if I can get a video of it so basically you want to reach down you want to grab a hold of that um, you really don't need to grab it with the tweezers but you just want to get a little bit of pressure on it and you can see those nubs that stick up. Let me see if I can get a good shot of that. You can kind of see that little um, notch that sticks up. Um, those are actually captured in this hole uh, here. Um, so it makes it really easy to figure out which way to put the pin in. It's only on one side. Um, and basically, you want I pushed up a little bit into the connector, pulled the nub down, and then pull out, and they come out really easy. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to take this connector off. And what we want to do is we want to replicate um, this here. Uh, what I'm going to do is probably label each one of these banks. Uh, just so that I don't forget, and I'll also take a picture. Uh, but we want to replicate these connections, which is positive 12 volts with key on, ground, positive 12 volts all the time. This is the memory. That's the yellow wire. Um, and then you have your... Uh, speaker wire. Uh, so basically you've got white, white, black, uh, gray, and your gray, black. Um, so I don't know that parallelity is really going to matter on the speaker per se, especially, uh, you know, we really only have two. This is not like a high quality, high fidelity system. Uh, but you can assert that the non-striped wire is more than likely it's going to be the negative or the non-stropped wire is actually going to be the positive the stropped wire is going to be the negative and that's the way i'm going to hook these up um, and that should work just fine okay so we went and done that we've marked just so so my brain can remember hot ground memory speaker negative side speaker positive side um, we're going to keep alignment um, for speakers. I may end up with a left-right mix-up. I really don't care. Um, it's not like I'm using any kind of fade or balance controls. Um, they're basically equal output. What you want to make sure is that you get the positive and negative 
to each speaker set correct. So um, I'm just going to take a random guess here. Um, and I'm going to assume probably the gray. I'll, I'll try to match up on this side and we'll, we'll flip the... Looking here, I think it's green. Yeah, so green. Green would be left and gray would be right. I don't think that matters. I don't care on mine. Um, but we're going to remove this this connector head. This is what fits the Sani. This is what we took off. Um, as you can see, it's basically the same connector style. It just has more pins. It has another row of pins. Um, really, really, which is the only difference. Um, so we're just going to reuse this. Um, really, no damage to this radio. No damage to this radio. Making this swap. Um, but I'm going to get these off and insert these to match up with my markings here. Okay, so now we're where we want to be. Um, we've removed the old connector. Um, now we've got the new connector laid out here. We've got everything labeled. Um, we know the uh, there was already a paint mark on the orientation, so when I took photos of this, I can tell where this was oriented. Um, sometimes it gets a little confusing about how this is flipped. Um, as you can see, there's basically, uh, the, the Sandy connector makes a lot of sense because basically it kept all the speaker wires here. You've got your memory here your ground and your hot here. So, so it's a fairly simple process of popping these back in where you want them to go. The only thing I'll recommend, especially if you're not using the proper tool, is just look down and make sure that you haven't um, kind of flexed the plastic where those won't pop in and stay. Uh, mine look good, uh, but if you do have an issue, you can always go back in from this side um, and take a look. Um, you can actually press something either down in this slot here if you've got something small. Um, I kind of flex mine out a little bit here with a flat tool that would fit down on that hole. Um, or you can come in from this side with something sharp and pointy and kind of, you know, flex them back to where they will lock. Um, I should have good engagement. So next we're going to pop these in, um, get the connector on, and then we'll actually go back to the radio. We're going to pull these out. Um, just kind of show you here the way that I check this prior is I basically set both of these radio faces up relatively close to where they'll actually sit. And it's relatively close. And as you can see, you can get a little bit better down shot. So if you look there, basically this hole lines directly up with this hole. Um, so this should just mount in um, without any issues. This should be a metric. This should be a metric. Um, but we'll, we'll tack that when we get to it. If we need to change the screw size, we can. I don't think we will kind of just a comparison of what they actually look like. Okay, so we've got everything done. Uh, one thing I'll recommend when you do these wires, um, really detangle them kind of all the way back to here um, so that you have good alignment coming up with the connector. That way you don't end up with like, you know, a big rat's nest um, if you have these wires coming in and out. It's really hard to get these back out or it takes some effort. Um, one thing I'll mention, so on the diagram, the striped red on these I use for uh, speaker positive uh, which is documented here one area of confusion uh, that may be different um, the other ones had a black stripe so I assume that that was the negative again speaker parallelity doesn't generally matter um, unless you have like opposing um, speakers uh, but this is not like a high fidelity system so it shouldn't matter you just want to make sure that you have uh, you know, a positive, negative to go into the correct speaker. Um, so these are the solid wires. These are considered the negatives on those, on the speaker, uh, for this radio. As you can see, gray is right speaker negative. Uh, green is left speaker negative. Um, so we've kind of followed that same model. Again, hot wire, ground, full constant on memory wire. We got this line back up. These just basically pop in just like they do from the factory. They are the same uh, pin style, uh, which is really convenient. Uh, we have taken the mount off, as you can see here. Um, the same screws and hardware works with this radio. Um, this is kind of what you end up with. Um, I did have to remove this bezel. The radio does come with this bezel, um, which is basically replaced by the, the metal bezel. 
Uh, the fit is probably the same. The only difference is there's a little more black. Let me grab the old one and you can see there's kind of a black buffer lip um, that pops up here um, off of the original Sandy radio. I was looking to see if maybe it came off. Um, it doesn't appear to, uh, but no big deal. Uh, the fit and finish is still really good. Uh, you have a little bit of gap here, a little bit of gap here. The old radio had the similar gap of than that um, little spacer, and it basically had a black, you know, black, black plastic was behind here. And when you looked, you could see the plastic instead of just open air. But uh, that should be fine. Um, so let me get this uh, together. We'll go back down to the excavator. Um, I did get some new bolts, black bolts with hex heads. Uh, rather than the Phillips head screws that came in this. Um, should make installation a little bit easier and it should look better because the Phillips heads were like a, um, you know, zinc coated uh, screw were the replacements that I got. Um, they're M4 screws. Um, they should basically cover more of this hole and also um, be hex head and black so they'll match uh, this. So it should look a little bit better. But let me get this down there in the excavator and we'll get it together and see if it works. Okay, so I got down at the excavator and I noticed if you actually look on the back side, I do have this wired correctly. Um, this is the left, this is the right. And the way you can tell is they've actually conveniently labeled every single one of these wires um, has a screen print on the wire. So you can see right, left, Left positive is here, which is the red and green on this radio. Uh, so this is connected, radio comes on, and we have the an antenna connected. Uh, so I'm going to get it back together and see if we have audio. Okay, so we got everything back assembled. Um, radio does work, I'm going to flip the switch off. Um, so basically the clock stays on but not illuminated. And that's from the memory. You have Bluetooth, kind of all the standard features. Um, this is definitely has more output wattage than the old radio. Um, now we're to the point of assembly. And what I did is I just ordered these on Amazon. Nice assortment of different length M4 screws. Um, and they were also kind enough to send an Allen key if it's still in here. I may have dumped it out of the box when I was checking it, but so this came with an Allen key. Obviously, an Allen key is a lot easier to get into these spots. Um, I'm probably going to use a round nose Allen and get this tightened down. That should uh, get us back working. Let's uh, let's put those bolts in and get the final look, so you can kind of see the difference. Um, to me, it's a little bit easier to see than the uh, old Sani. Um, this is lighted. Put this back on here. As you can tell, so that is lighted, so you can at least tell volume. Um, it's in Bluetooth mode now. It tells you that it's paused. I don't want to break any YouTube rules about letting some music play, but um, all that's left is putting these bolts in, and we'll get the final look. Stay tuned. Okay, so installation's complete. You can see you've got cap head screws. It looks a little bit better, so a little bit easier to get to. These are the troublesome screws. They're really hard to get to. And uh, it's hard to get to with a Phillips. A little bit easier to get to with something like that, ball head. Um, one thing I'll say is you really only get about that much turn each time. So um, just take your time and screw them down as far as you can with your fingers. Um, just to save you a little bit of time here, here are the screws that I ended up using. Uh, 12 millimeter long M4. Um, just button head hex screws. This uh, saves a little bit of time getting that radio in and out, and it looks a whole lot better because it basically matches the black. Um, all in all, really happy. Got tunes back in the excavator. Anyway, hope hope this helps some folks out, uh, especially if you don't like the uh, stock radio. That's kind of what uh, is involved with the wiring in it. Um, this particular unit, I'll try to put a link to the, both the screw set that I used and this radio, um, if at all possible, uh, if you already got the model number, you can do a search. 
Um, there are several models of this out. Um, all of them are very similar. Big thing you want to watch is that, that it does have that flat blade because that prevents you from having to uh, do a lot of wiring work. Uh, basically, you can take the connector off the sandy, put it on this one um, without cutting any wires. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope this helps. We'll see you on the next one.